the search for stable, heritable characteristics that could predict or at least account for the superior performance of eminent individuals has been surprisingly unsuccessful. That was a mouthful. Next slide. Next slide. Translation, science is having a hard time finding this talent thing. <laughs> you can go back, that's exactly what they said. Next slide. Same guys, bigger mouthful. All right, I gotta, I gotta try and read this. The belief that the striking differences between expert performers and less accomplished performers reflect innate abilities is so strong that the failure to identify the specific talents necessary for expert performance in a given domain is viewed, at most, as a temporary problem until the relevant talents are discovered. That was all one sentence. Bad writing. The conviction in the importance of talent appears to be based on the insufficiencies of alternative hypotheses to explain the exceptional nature of expert performance. Let's do a translation slide. Everybody, including scientists, keeps believing talent is critical for superior performance, despite the fact that science can't identify talent. Now, when I say talent, science can't identify talent, I mean we haven't found things that allow us to predict later conditions. It's not that a scientist can't point at somebody and say, wow, kid, you're a pretty good artist or you're a pretty good scientist. It's that they can't look at somebody and say, wow, you are going to be a doctor five years earlier and you're going to be at the top of your field by age 35. They, they can't do that. They haven't figured out how to do that yet. Next uh, bullet. We are making this, uh, we, we, we remain a slave <coughs> to this belief because of the lack of a better explanation. So let's look for a better explanation. Next slide. Practice and experience lead to maximal performance. Some kinds of practice are better than others. Work is not the same as practice. Those of you who are holding down full-time jobs, oh, I have bad news for you, and it's coming up on a couple of slides. Deliberate, focused practice is better than work. In short, practice makes perfect. All right, how many people have heard practice makes perfect at a time in your life when you did not want to practice anymore. Oh my gosh, I hate to tell you that mom was right. And not only was she right, your piano teacher was right, your violin teacher was right, your soccer coach was right. They were all telling you that practice makes perfect. Unfortunately, they were also telling you that you were gifted or that you weren't, and so you were getting a mixed message. Next slide. Let's test the hypothesis. In chess, it is statistically rare to attain international chess master status after less than 10 years of intense preparation. Bobby Fischer only managed to knock a year off of that. Okay, he was talented, but we couldn't predict that. And statistically, 10% in one case isn't a big thing. In music composition, 10 years experience appears to be a minimum required before the first outstanding pieces are composed. Have any of you ever heard Mozart's first piece of music that he wrote at age four? It is the musical equivalent of refrigerator art. It's a lovely, lovely little thing written in crayon, and you can tell that, yeah, it's, it's neat, but he didn't start producing real music I mean, real music that we play over and over and over and over again for another 10 years. All right, so he was 14. But that's 10 years of rigorous practice. Finally, for scientists, authors, and poets, the average time between first publication and publication of their greatest work is just over 10 years. Have any of you read Aragon? Uh, get your hands way up there. We need to embarrass you for the camera. All right. Um, Christopher Paolini wrote that when he was 15. Let's come back to him when he's 25. My buddy Bob, and I've got to share this on camera because it's, it's too good to not share. My buddy Bob was reading Aragon while his friend, who had already read Aragon, was reading, I think Eldest is the next book. And Bob's reading Aragon, and he says, have they met Yoda yet? And the guy reading Eldest says, they, they have met Yoda. How did you know? And Bob said, 
because I'm reading Star Wars, so you've got to be reading The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Next slide. Now, let's talk about spending that decade, work versus practice. Work is reward-based, right? You work because somebody's paying you. When working, you avoid doing what you're worst at. Oh, am I ever guilty of this? When was the last time you saw a really, really lavishly detailed background scene in Schlock Mercenary? Um, sometimes it's on Sundays. Usually I find a way to shortcut that. You compare my artwork to, say, Phil Folio's artwork. When he does a lavish background, you stare at that picture for 20 minutes. You, you need to get his stuff in print and, and look at it and say, oh my, there are all these little, I don't do that. That's hard. I haven't learned to do that yet, so it remains hard, so I don't do it. Good enough gets the reward. Which part of the words <laughs> schlock and mercenary imply that I'm going to spend a lot of time going the extra mile to get paid? Practice. Practice, on the other hand, is goal-based. Practice focuses on your weakness. Practice takes your weakness and turns it into strength. And the rewards are greatly delayed. Greatly delayed. You, you've seen this. I'm sure you have. You, you practice at something, you realize, well, I'm getting a little better at this, but nobody paid me. And then 10 years, 10 years down the line, when you've got a career in that field, you look back and you say, boy, all that practice doing, I'm pulling something off the top of my head, doing differential equations on the back of a napkin, that really paid off. All that practice trying to write, um, uh, what's, what's the code puzzle? I've forgotten it now. The, uh, with the, yeah, Sudoku. Sudoku's not a good example. I'm looking for the, um, the thing that coders are given as an interview exam. It's a... Stupid little puzzle, I can't remember the name of it now. We'll just edit that part out of the video, right? The rewards are delayed, and sometimes you look at what you've been studying or whatever for years, you look back and you say, boy, that just never paid off. So why practice? Next slide. Ascent, arrival and ascent. I promised you full-time position holders that I had bad news, and here it is. Um, you start, you know, discovering you have an interest in, we will say, coding for computer thingies. How's that for non-technical? And then you go to school for it. You study computer science, and boom, learning curve. And then you get your first job, and they say, oh, look, kid, I, I know you know how to program in, in C sharp, but now we're looking at C bleeding edge sharp. and whatever this new language is, and there's another little learning curve, and then you end up out here on another plateau. Um, granted, you're really good at what you do, but you're probably not world-class good at what you do. And in fact, even if you are world-class good at what you do, you may still end up there. Next slide. The plateau effect. You've worked at this for years, and you suddenly realize you're not really getting any better. Or you've practiced this for a long time, and it's just not improving. You feel like you're stagnating. Any of you feeling that, noticing that? Got any of that going on? I do. Boy, do I ever. Next slide. The reason for the plateau, OK, first and foremost, it happens to everybody, and it doesn't mean you're not talented. See the graph back there? All right. Work is not the same thing as practice. You might have been dodging the hard bits. Practice isn't going to help if you're not practicing things the right way. And finally, hey, you know what? You've noticed the stagnation. Awesome. The first step to solving a problem is admitting you've got a problem. Uh, I'm looking at my background art. You're listening to this slide presentation. You're saying, OK, you've admitted that you have a problem. Are you going to solve it? All right. The second step to solving a problem is deciding you're going to solve the problem, and I haven't decided that yet. <laughs> Next slide. 